Okay. No, we're good. Um, questions on the homework? <laughs> 17. <laughs> so, so I have to assign homework now for you guys to do it? 17. Seventeen thirty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, let's do some examples. <laughs> well, these all start with the find the area bounded by. chapter, that's the nice part. Um, volumes, really fun. Okay, how do we do this? Okay, so what do we need? Well, drawing would be nice. Right? Sure, 3 minus x looks like what? Straight line going like that. Goes through 3 here, goes through 3 there. x squared minus 9. Travel also goes through 3. Right. Over here it goes through minus 3, but obviously these guys are going to intersect in two points. I want the area between these guys. How do I find those intersection points? Right, set them both equal to each other, so for intersections. Alright, so notice here I didn't tell you what the limits are. I just said find the region between these two curves. The limits will define themselves, you just have to solve for them. So you said x squared minus 9 equals to 3 minus x which means you have x squared plus x, and then you move this 3 over, that becomes minus 12. How do you solve that? Factor, or the numbers? Huh? Right, 3 and 4. And then if you put a plus 4 and a minus 3, that will give you, this is minus 3x, plus 4x gives me that plus x, minus 3 times 4 gives me minus 12. So this is obviously the 3. This guy would happen to be a minus 4. Right? So x is equal to 3, or x equals minus 4. So those are the limits on my integral. So the area is going to be equal to, the limits are minus 4 up to 3. What do I integrate? Hmm? Minus bottom, so 3 minus x. All right, 3 minus x minus x squared minus 9, because we're using that principle, top minus bottom. It's a very, very important principle. In the next section, we're going to use it all the time. And it's going to, we're going to be doing a whole bunch of other stuff while using it. So make sure you get that principle down. OK, so from here, it's just, at this point, it's like, it's like the super easy part of chapter 6. Like, heck, this is calc 1. Right, so this is just 3 minus x minus x squared plus 9. So this, I combine these, that's 12 minus x minus x squared. Now you just integrate, that's 12x minus x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3. This is 12 times 3 minus 9 over 2 minus 20, plug in 3 here, that's just 9, minus, plug in minus 4 here, so 12 times minus 4, minus, minus 4 squared over 2, minus, minus 4 cubed over 3, and that's whatever. So, main principles, top minus bottom, or it can be right minus left, but in this case it was top minus bottom, and we find the intersection by substituting one into the other. Let's do it again. Um, I, actually, I actually did work this out. I got a 343 over 6. 
I worked out some of the answers because I didn't want to waste time on arithmetic because um, it's assumed that we know it. <laughs> okay, second thing, y equals x squared, y equals 2 minus x squared. Four. x between 0 and 2. Again, we can sketch here. y equals x squared looks like this. 2 minus x squared looks like this. 3. Maximum is 2. This will go through radical 2. This will go through minus, minus radical 2. So this is the region I care about. So what now? No, it was y. Same thing again, yes. Well, that's not the region I care about. Right? So here I gave you limits. How does how does this affect things? You don't need the left side. I don't need the left side. Do I need anything else? Yeah. Yeah. That is the range. You need to find the x value where they intersect where it's greater than zero. Why? Because that's the future between the graphs. So we set one as zero, and the other one we find out. If it's equivalent to. But isn't there something missing? What's radical two roughly? One point seven. One point four, right? What's the limit that I'm supposed to be on? Two. I should have go all the way up to 2. So, if I get into one. so there's something further, right? So this is at radical 2, but I want to go all the way up to 2. There's an area missing, right? There's like this guy. Right? Because I'm taking the area between the curves from 0 to 2. Okay, what does this mean? Two integrals. So We're going to need two integrals, okay. So. What's the first one? Well, that's the range. But yeah, top one is one. Zero to radical two would bring me up to here. Can we find intersect first? I need to find this point. This is going to happen before radical two. I need to find that point, which again, very similar to over there, just set them equal to each other. Intersection x squared is equal to two minus x squared which means x would be what? Plus or minus 1? So this would be at 1. So my area is going to be, what is it? From 0 to 1, what am I integrating? Top minus bottom. Top minus bottom, so it's going to be? 2 minus x squared minus x squared. Top minus bottom. Plus, from 1 up to 2, pretty much the opposite. x squared minus 2 minus x, because they switch roles here. Right? So be very careful. I gave you a limit here, which means you have to continue further. Okay? So um, this is just 2 minus 2x squared. Right? So I'm just going to integrate that. That's 2x minus 2 thirds x cubed between 0 and 1 minus, it's going to be the same, 2 x minus 2 thirds x cubed between 1 and 2. So if I plug in 1, I get 2 minus 2 thirds minus, plug in 0, I get 0 minus, plug in 2, 2 times 2 minus 2 times 2 cubed over 3 minus, plug in 1, I get 2 minus 2 thirds. And when that's all said and done, I believe the answer is 4. We put that story. So again, top minus bottom. In this case, though, it actually switched on us. Right? So you have to be careful. Do you have a question? I'm just trying to figure out. I see it kind of fast. I didn't see any that the second one was. Oh, it's again top minus bottom. Oh. Right? So when I'm in this region, I have to look who's on top. Right? This curve is on top. Right? So that's the x squared. 
and then the other curves on the bottom, that's the two minus x. So here I just switched them. X squared is on top, that's on bottom. It's pretty much the same guy here, I just switched them, because they switch rules. Right. Over here, two minus x squared is on top, but over here, x squared is on top. Oh, I see. Right? For the different limits. running through a bunch of these. Um, once again, that top minus bottom or right minus left concept down, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, by the way, the, the problems on the final would look, and the test would look pretty much like this. Like I'd ask you for an error problem. Oh, find error between these two curves. Again, y equals x squared. y equals 2 minus x. y equals 0. I give you three curves. The area bounded by those three curves. Y equals x squared. You can see you have to remember your graphs. Y equals two minus x. It's gonna go through two. This is also going through two. And y equals zero, which is the x-axis. What's the region I care about? Under the curve. Over here? Yeah. I know. No, I think it's just that little triangle. This guy here. All right. It has to be bounded by all three. The region over here is only bounded by two of the mentioned curves, right? This is the only region that's bounded by all three. So here's that x squared, here's that 2 minus x, here's the y equals 0. There's no other region that's bounded by all three curves. That's the guy. It's not exactly a triangle because this side here is from the parabola. It's actually curved. Okay. So now what? That's one option. We can do it in terms of y, right? Because there's two tops and bottoms here, right? Over here, the top is the line. Over here, the top is the problem. But if I look at it this way, there's only one top and bottom. There's only one guy on the right and one guy on the left. So I'd do this right minus left if I had the choice, which means I'm going to do everything dy. So I'm going to need to figure out that point here. How do I figure out that point? coordinate where these guys meet. X equals everything like this. This is where those parabola equals the line. So I can set x squared equals 2 minus x, which means that x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. So I have x2, x1, I do a plus 2, a minus 1, that works, but x is either minus 2 or x is positive 1. Obviously, this is where x is positive 1. So I just plug in here, y would also give me 1. x equals 1, y is equal to x squared, so that's also 1. So my y value are from 0 to 1. So now, how can I set up my area? Here I'm going to do right minus left. Because top minus bottom, I would be two integrals. Although you could do it that way, but let's do it right minus left. So what does this guy would look like? Zero to one. I'm doing dy, so my limits come from the y-axis. So I'm looking at that zero to one over there. What's the right curve? Right, I need to solve for x, right? So I would get 2 minus y, that's the guy on the right, 2 minus y, the guy on the left, radical y. So then this, just, well, I can integrate this. Integral of 2, 2y, integral of y, is y squared over 2, integral of radical y. y to the three halves. Y to the 3 halves, 2 thirds. Right. 0, 1. So this is 2 minus a half minus 2 thirds. I believe it was 5 over 6. Um,
comparison. Complete this area using top minus bottom. How would I have to set this up? I, I already did find the intersection, so I know the x-intersection. So how would it look? From 0 to 1, what am I? X squared minus 0. 0 is the bottom curve on the between 0 and 1. The x plus from 1 up to 2. 2 minus x. 2 minus x. And I would have done all that, and I should end up with the same thing, 5 over 6. It's very important that you understand the difference between the two. Right? I don't like tilting the head thing. Yeah. Oh, you need to like tilting the head thing. When you're in Calc 3, <laughs> when you're in Calc 3, you're going to be looking at the world in all sorts of different angles. You need to get used to not being, oh, oh, it's this. No, sometimes you have to do that. In Calc 3, there's going to be another axis coming out of the board, so you might have to do this. <laughs> You'll be after looking all sorts of ways. Be, so be, not only know how to set it up in either way, but know when one would be more efficient than another one. Because if you see this problem on the final and you draw this diagram, you should know before even starting the problem that this way is the easier way, and that way is the harder way. You should be able to look, okay, Here's the top and bottom that's different from here, but over here the top and bottom is different, right? But there's only one right, one left, right? Things like that you need to see. It's going to be very important in the next section as well. So neither of these are wrong, but I'd rather do it this way, right? Less work, less options for mistakes. Do another one. Here are the curves. And this is like D now. X equals Y squared. X equals 2 minus Y squared. What does X equal Y squared look like? Right. Sideways parabola, x equals 2 minus y squared. C minus Run backwards. That's the area I want. This goes up to 2. That's at 0. My intersection points are? Right, so for intersections, intersections. I said y squared equals 2 minus y squared. This means y equals plus or minus 1. That's a 1 minus 1. How would I set up this area? Which way is easier, top to bottom or right to left? Right to left. Again, if I do a vertical line here, my top and bottom are from this parabola, while a vertical line over here would mean my top and bottom come from a different parabola. So my top and bottom change. However, no matter where I am, the right guy, the right side is always given by this parabola, the left side is always given by that parabola. Right? So there's only one right and left, so I do right minus left. So limits on the interval. Negative one to one, right function. It's two minus y squared minus the left function, y squared dy. Notice that you also have the option of doubling from zero to one. Right? Because you can use symmetry to your advantage. Notice that the top half is symmetric to the bottom. So I could go from zero to one and double the answer. It's an option. It'll sort of give you less work when you're plugging in zero. And 
can do it. This is 2 times 2y minus 2 thirds y cubed. Be 0 and 1. This will be 2 times 2 minus 2 thirds, which was 8 over 3. Questions? Let's do another one. Um, I believe I put something similar to this on the on the test. Yes. The, like the bonus it was like three uh, x cubed minus x squared minus ten x. And the other one was y equals minus x squared plus 2x. So here's the trick. If you see my solutions, you'll notice that I could have done this without graphing. Because you could graph, it's not, it's actually not that bad. Just factor out an x here, then factor the quadratic. You get three solutions for x, and then you plot those points on your x intercepts, you draw the cubic, then you draw the quadratic. It's actually not that bad, but again, it's still too much time, I think. Um, so, what did we do? Intersection. Intersection is something we're going to need to find no matter what. So, let's find the intersection. This means 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x equals minus x squared plus 2x. Right. I can add two x squared to both sides, bring the 2x over, so I have 3x cubed. Bring this over, that's 8, 12, uh, and subtracting. Okay, then that's equal to 0, then what? Factor out of 3x. Then factor out of 3x, I get x squared minus 4. So I have x minus 2 plus 2. Now I have three solutions, x equals 0, x equals 2, x equals minus 2. Now I don't have to graph. The whole point of graphing is what? Figure out, visualize to figure out who's on top and who's on the bottom. But if I know all the intersection points, I can do a test to figure that out anyway. Right? Exactly, calc 1. Right? Plug in a point in between here, right? Let's say I call this guy the first curve, y1, I call that y2, right? So if I plug in minus one into y1, what does that give me? Into this, the result is what? Six? What if I plugged into y2? Minus 3. So who's on top? Uh, y1. y1 is the top. It's the larger y value. Right? What about here? If I plug in 1 into y1, negative what? Negative 8. And if I plug in that 1 into y2, I get positive 1. So this guy's on top. So top and bottom actually switches. Right? Y1 is the top between minus 2 and 0. Y2 is the top between 0 and 2. So to finish that off, this will be from minus 2 to 0. We're going to do top minus bottom. My top now is the cubic and the bottom is the quadratic. So 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x minus plus from 0 to 2, pretty much the opposite, minus x squared plus 2x minus 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x. 
the trick, don't look at these as two separate integrals. The answer here is just going to be the negative of the answer there. And then you're plugging in these, then, these values. Okay. So again, that's a polynomial. Not something I really want to waste my time on. I believe the answer is 24. Just by using the power rule. Questions on this idea, the concept of finding areas? Well, you still, whoever gives you the larger value. Okay. So if this were a negative one, that would still be on top, because negative one is higher than negative three. Yep. Just whoever gives you the larger value is the top. Uh, that's pretty much it. We did all the theory last time. Now we'll just get to getting through examples. So now we can move on to the next chapter. Uh, I have a question. Yes. About uh, homework. 17. Homework <laughs> 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 for, for what? Uh, I found a physical problem. I also had a problem when it comes to The homework isn't due yet. <laughs> so I want to know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Keep working on it. There's a cosine one. It didn't make sense. Cosine pi x equals x squared. How am I supposed to find x intersection? For what? Cosine pi x. Y equals cosine pi x, and then there's another one. Y equals four x squared minus one. Y equals cosine pi x, and yes. y equals four x squared minus one. one. How am I supposed to find that? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? There's a section. Huh? In this section. What did you say? It's plus or minus one half. It's plus or minus one half. Okay. <laughs> oh, right. Thank you. Did you see it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Because if x is plus or minus a half, this gives you zero. And cosine of pi over 2 is also zero. It's, a, it's an inspection thing. <laughs> you either know it or you don't. Okay. Huh? You either know it or you don't. That's like. That's like. I'm gonna put a problem like that on the next. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I know your weakness. No. <laughs> Some point two volumes. <laughs> well, technically, it's volumes of revolution. Pi R squared. Pi squared. Um, general concept, we used to go into this really deeply, but for now I'm just going to tell you because they don't really test you on the general concept very well. But the idea is we can actually use integrals to figure out volumes in the following way. Volume is the integral of a of x dx, um, where a of x is the cross-sectional area of an object. You can actually find the volume of the object. So what that means is, let's say I have an object that looks like like this. Right? It's a three-dimensional object. Right? So the idea is, you sort of imagine this as the x-axis coming right out of the object. Right, so the side view would look like side view. Would just look like this. But then from the side, if I have a function that at any value of x that I'm here, I, it gives me the area, right? So I'm like slicing this thing into a lot of little slices, right? of all widths delta x, right? slicing it into a lot of little slices. And then I have a function that gives me the area of the face at any given x value. Then if I integrate along all these x values, I actually get the volume, because volume is the area of the base times the length. Right? So if I know here, like this is f of x, and that's like g of x, 
right? I can figure out the cross-sectional area, figure out where my limits are. So this is like B, A, and so I can get here the volume is just the integral from A to B of A of X, dx. Um, I, you probably have a couple problems like this in your homework, but I'm not focusing on it a lot, right? One thing though that we really want to focus on is revolution. So one way we can get a volume is to revolve something around the axis. And hence, we obtain a circle as the cross-section, cross-sectional shape, right? So let's say now, applying this to revolutions, So let's say we wish to obtain a volume by rotating an object obtained by rotating curve around an axis. So let's say I have some shape that I can uniformly describe as there is some curve here, f of x doing whatever. And let's say I want to just rotate this around the x-axis, right? Just take this curve and right? just rotate it right around the x-axis. So then here, it rotates, right, at all points to create that, right? So my original curve is this f of x. But I create an object by rotating this f of x around the x-axis, right? So I create this solid shape here, right? Now what you'll notice is by rotating, the side view is now a circle. Right? Which means my A of X function can be given by the area of a circle. Right? So I can look at this as pi R squared. Now, how would I describe what my R is? Well, this is the axis of rotation, so that I can think of as the center of revolution. R is just going to be the distance from that to the function. Right? So in this case, I can think of my R as F of X. And so, if I want to find the area between A and B, for example, I can think of this as the volume between there would be A up to B of pi times f of x squared dx. Okay. That's sort of the general principle that's going on. This leads to one of the two most important methods that we will be doing in 7.2. It talks about three methods, but we're only focusing on two of them. The first method is really very general, and it goes by what I said here. But a second method takes this idea into account, revolutions. It's called the disk method, because we obtain a disk. The disk, probably with a C. Depends on it. You're using British English or American English, I guess. The disk method, right? This is a special case of the washer method. So you might hear both of these terms being thrown around. They're really basically the same thing. I'm going to explain the difference between the two and how to set one up. Um, so, for example, when do you obtain a disk? Well, let's say I have a function here, that's my f of x, rotated around, say, the x-axis. Right? So I obtain this object here. Notice that on this side, I see a disk. However, what if I took a very similar object? I took this region here, and I said, you know, I want to rotate around some other axis other than the x-axis, like way down here, right? What's going to happen is this whole object is going to rotate all the way down here, right? So that part I'm going to start seeing here. 
right? Because rotated all the way around. Now what happens is there's a gap in the middle. And what you realize is going to happen, there's going to be an inner circle for the two closer curves and an outer circle for the two far away curves. So you see your cross section now is a washer, right? It's just one disc inside another disc, right? So that's the difference between a washer, right? So basically a washer where there's no gap in the middle is a disc. It's really the same method, right? This one is just way more general. Okay. So let's set, let me set up the disc and washer method, and let's do a few problems. I have a question. Yes. What's the difference between a disc and a circle? Like, disc is filled in. Circle would be the outline. Circle is just the edge, right? This means everything is filled in. Okay. Now I'm going to give you the down and dirty method. Remember in Calc 2, we're going to be computing a lot of things really quickly, so I have to give you like, let's get to the point, figure out a method of how to compute these. Here are things you need to know for the disk method. Formula, which must be memorized. Volume is equal to the integral of big R squared minus little r squared. That is the formula you must remember. It can be with respect to dx or dy, so I'm leaving that off. Um, but that's the idea that you want. Big R here refers to the outer radius. Right? It's the radius to, from the axis of rotation to the farther curve. One thing I want to mention, emphasize here, it's a distance. The outer radius is the distance from the axis of rotation to the farther curve. It's a distance. I'm going to come back to that. Little r is the inner radius. This is also a distance. It's the distance from the axis of rotation to the closer curve. There is a pi, because it's pi r squared. We're using the, the main formula, right? But I want to emphasize there's a big R squared and a little r squared. There's the case where the little r is zero, in which case you have the disk method, right? Um, if the little r is not zero, you have the washer method. And we're using pi r squared because we're rotating and this, the cross-sectional area is the area of a circle. Okay. Here's another thing that when we start to set it up, you'll see what I mean, but I'm just going to tell you right now. If you're a little bit confused by it, don't worry right now. Um, it'll be clear. You're thinking disk or washer. Right? This is just a mnemonic that I use. I think it's easier to remember things this way. I think of the D in the disk. It stands for the word different. Right? D for different. Okay. okay? So what do I mean by that? If rotating about, let's say, a curve x equals something, like x equals a constant, you're supposed to use dy, right? So if you go around x equals something, use dy. All your functions should be in a dy. The integral should be a dy integral, OK? Different. You just change it. x goes with y, right? If rotating about y equals a constant, use the x. So if I'm going around y equals some of that guy might say, rotate this shape about x equals 4. I can say that, right? Then if I say rotate around x equals something, means your integral should be set up in terms of y's, right? Um, note, this confuses a lot of students sometimes. The x-axis is what kind of line? 
it's a y line, right? The x axis is y equals zero. So if I say rotate this around the x axis, I expect you to use set up your integral in terms of x, right? The y axis is an x line. This is x equals zero. So if I say rotate this around the y axis, I expect you to set up your integral in terms of y. Okay. Um, something that they it's kind of intuitive, but I'll mention it anyway. Radius is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So just get this. When I teach you the other method, you'll see why this is a nice thing to remember. The other method is the shell method. S stands for same. And so things will, if you're going to write x equals something, you get dx. If y equals something, you get dy. Right? But for now, remember, this means different. So if I ask you about rotate around x equals something, you should be setting everything up in terms of y's. Right? If I ask you to rotate around y equals something, set up everything in terms of x's. Your limits on your integral come from the x-axis in this case. Limits of your integral will come from the y-axis in this case. Right, so what you need to know is the formula. It's very important. What you also need to know is this. Once you know those, a little bit of practice should make you experts on this. So um, another thing I want to emphasize though, distance. How are distances measured? So if we have a horizontal distance, how do you measure a horizontal distance? More basic. Hmm? It's delta x. How do you compute delta x? It's the kind of concept that I was using with area. Simpler. X final minus x initial. What were we talking about area? When we say area, what were we looking at? Figure out who's what and what. Top and bottom. In terms of horizontal distance, what do I use? Left and right, in what order? Right, right minus left. Okay. Remember that. If you're measuring a horizontal distance, you take the thing on the right minus the thing on the left. Do not get confused by this. <laughs> a lot of kids, they just get, everything looks complicated. It's not complicated. This whole section is about right minus left, top minus bottom. Trust me. Right? Think of it that way and you'll never be confused no matter what I throw at you. If you're measuring a vertical distance, what are you going to think? Top minus bottom. Who's on top, who's on bottom, this minus that. Okay. So when you're thinking distance, the radiuses are distances, which means when I'm measuring those radiuses, I'm going to be doing one of two subtractions. I'm either going to be doing a right minus a left or a top minus a bottom. That's pretty much all you need to know for the disk method. Let's actually do some examples. I did some nice pictures here, but never mind. Let's actually do some. Example. Find the following. this curve, y equals radical x. Where my x goes from 0 to 4 about the x-axis.
Now that's a, a pretty simple rotation problem. I'm never going to ask you anything like that. It would be more complicated. But we'll, we're building up to it. So, ideas. Is that catching here? Yes. Yeah. OK, cool. Even you? No, I, I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm not important, obviously. OK, what do, what do we think here? Tell me some of the stuff. We all know the this method right here. So draw a picture. That, that's, that'll be nice to do. Y equals x squared. Radical x looks like this. I only care about going up to 4, right? And I'm rotating this about the axis. Now, how we measure radius is it's the distance from the axis of rotation to the curve, right? So my radius is just going to be that, right? That's my radius, right? I'm rotating around the x-axis, right? My radius is the distance from the axis of rotation to the curve, right? There's only one curve to consider here, right? So there's just a big R. Right? That's my radius. This I'm going to rotate around. Right? So that's the picture that I have. Now, what else do I know? What formula am I using here? Pi r squared. Minus zero squared. Yeah. Right, right. It'll be minus zero squared. So it's technically a washer, but we're looking at just pi r squared. D what? So the x-axis has what equation? Is y equals 0. For the disk method, what am I going to use? Different. Different. dx. I need to set up things in terms of x. Okay. <laughs> now, let's figure out what is the r. So that's the first thing. Before I even start this problem, you know it's a dx problem. Right? That's the formula. It has to be in terms of x's. What's the radius? So I know my radius has to be described in terms of x because I'm doing a dx integral. So what is the height of this? Hmm? Square root of x. It's just square root of x. If I wanted to be like super like pedantic about it, it's square root of x minus 0, right? It's a vertical distance. The top is square root of x. The bottom is 0, right? So technically, square root of x minus 0. Just want to emphasize that now so you, you'll see when I start throwing in more stuff, you, you're in the habit of doing top minus bottom, right? So here, my big R is just radical x. And so now, my volume will be pi times the integral of radical x squared dx. What are the limits on my integral? Zero to four. Right, I told you, it's 0 to 4. Right? I want to integrate, revolve this whole thing, so it's just 0 to 4. So basically, take pi times 0 to 4, integrate x. I get pi x squared over 2 between 0 and 4. By plugging 4, I get 8 pi. So the volume of this object that I would get by rotating it would be 8 pi cubic units, or whatever units I'm using. Questions on that? Yes. <laughs> Since you wrote like x axis equals y equals zero, then you just made a dx again. Can't we just like jump from x axis to dx like all the time and then y axis just jump to dy instead of like thinking? I'd rather you think of it this way because I'm not always gonna ask you about x axis or y axis. I can ask you any line I want. I could have rotated this around the line y equals minus seven. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not always around the axis. That's why I want you to get into that habit of going through that motion. Okay. Once again, this is going to be a lot of fun setting these up and doing them. Okay, let's get let's do another one. Yes. Huh? Why you label the R over there? I'm just labeling my radiuses. Not, why is not the circle? A circle will be created when I rotate this around. I mean, I mean just the dash line. You see this line? Yeah. yeah. This one is R. 
Yeah, it's also R. R varies. But it changes everything. R changes. Like a zero with a R. Right, the, what I'm doing is I'm using the integral, I'm, it's like a Riemann sum, I'm cutting things into slices. And I'm rotating each slice and the integral is just adding up the volumes of all these slices. Right, so my radius over here is different from my radius over here, but they're all described by radical x. Right, whatever my x value happens to be, radical x tells me what the radius length is. Right, so this, it's computing a whole bunch of radiuses, all are ranging from 0 to 4. Four is only the radius I have when I'm way out here. But when I'm in the middle, I'm something else, right? If I'm at the beginning, the radius is zero. And it ranges from zero all the way up to four. Well, in this case, the radius will range all the way up to two. Okay, any other questions? Okay, let me describe another shape. Here I just drew a picture. Let me just do this. Okay, let's say find the volume <coughs> obtained by rotating the region. So what does this look like? Y equals x squared, so it's like parabola. Y equals x squared. Y equals squared, yeah, line. Y equals 4, it's so a horizontal line. So y equals 4. Y equals x squared. Therefore, this is the region I'm talking about, right? Now I'm taking that whole region and I'm rotating that around the x-axis, right? So ultimately, my object is going to look like sort of like an hourglass. Not really an hour plus second. Okay, so that's my region. Now here, you how do we set this up? You'd have two radiuses in this case, right? So there's going to be one radius. Here's my axis of rotation. So there's going to be one radius that measures to the closer curve, right? Which is the parabola in this case, right? That I call my little r. There's going to be another radius that goes to the farther curve that I call big R in our notation, right? There are two radiuses here. Each curve will have its own radius associated with it. And since I'm going around the x-axis, how should I be setting up my integral? This is the line y equals zero, which means I should be setting up dx. So now, what is big R? No, no, y equals 4. It's longer further away. Right? Big R is a vertical distance. It is given by top minus bottom. The top is 4. The bottom is 0. 4 minus 0 is my big R. What's my little r? It's a vertical distance. It is given by top minus bottom. The top is x squared. The bottom is 0. So little r is x squared minus 0. Which means my volume is given by pi times the integral of big r squared minus little r squared. So this is going to be pi times the integral of 4 squared minus x squared squared. What are my limits on this integral? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the intersection, just as we found. You can find the intersection here is 2, the intersection here is minus 2, set them equal, solve for x. So this is from negative 2 to 2. Right? In this case, again, I have symmetry. I could have done from 0 to 2 and double the answer, but that's optional. And that integral is not bad. 16 minus x to the fourth, just do power rule. 
Questions on that? It's closer to a test question. Yeah. We're, we're getting there. Intermediate level, maybe. Okay, so I'm going to give you one example and give you a whole bunch of variations for that one example. So you can sort of see how it would look. What time is that? Okay, Yeah. You say it's access, so you can always say it's access. Hmm? Once you say you're getting a bar, it's access. Yeah, x axis is the line y equals 0, which for the disk method we use dx. So, what do you say x axis? I can't say dx, right? With the disk method, yes. Right. I, I don't really want you to get in the habit of thinking x axis goes with dx, because the other method I'm teaching, that's not true. That's why I don't want you to think of that. I want you to think of x axis as y equals 0, disk means different, therefore do dx because this is a Y, right? That's, that kind of thinking about it works with the other method as well, right? If you think X axis means DX, you'll mess up the other method, right? So don't think of it in that term. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. Let R be the region. This is sort of how a test question might be set up. Let R be the region Founded by y equals x squared and y equals 3x. Find the volume obtained when r is rotated about a bunch of different things. I'm going to actually rotate about the x-axis, B, rotate it about the y-axis, C, rotate about the line x equals 4, D, rotate about the line x equals minus 1, E, rotate about the line y equals 10, and F, Rotate about the line y equals minus 2. So a test question might be, R is this region bounded by this curve? Find the volume obtained when R is rotated about x equals minus 1. I could just say that. Right? You, I'm not going to actually do like 6. Of them, right? But any, any one of these, I just, I'm just going to go through all the variations so you can sort of see it. But a question would pick one of these random lines. Rotate around minus 17, x equals minus 17, it could be whatever. Right? So. Let's go through these one by one and see how we would set it up. What would my region look like? Right, the region is going to be the same for all questions involved. So, um, actually, I'll, I'll probably redraw it for each question. So let's just jump into it over here. Because I'm going to mark this up with the radiuses all over the place and radii or whatever. Is there any grammar Nazis watching the video? Read on. Like, just unlike. <laughs> Set radiuses. Okay. Okay, let's go about the x axis. Now, when you see that, what do you think? y equals 0, meaning dx. So I don't like, you know, I'm setting up in terms of x. Okay, what's my region here? It's a parabola. And the line y equals 3x, which goes to the origin. So this is what my region looks like. I'm ter look ter doing it in terms of dx, so I really care about the intersection here. What is that going to be? Three. Three, right? So I said x squared equals 3x. I get x equals 0 or x equals 3. Right? So those are my two intersection points. OK. Now, if I'm rotating up about the x-axis, how's that going to set up? I'm going to have two radiuses. One goes to the closer curve. That's my little r. One goes to the farther curve. That's my big r. 
What is big R? What is little r? Big R is Right, big R is a vertical distance. It is top minus bottom. 3x minus 0. Little r is also a vertical distance, top minus bottom. X squared minus 0. Therefore, the volume here is pi times integral between 0 and 3 of big R squared minus little r squared. And that's just a power rule. That's not a big deal to do. I think I did the answer. Um, it looks innocent enough, but the answer is actually something kind of nasty. 162 pi over 5. So try that on your own. Make sure you get it. Um, questions about the setup? Okay. B. Let's go around the y-axis. So I see y-axis, what do I think? This is the line x equals 0, which means dy. I need to set up everything in terms of functions of y. So before I had functions of y, right? So I have the same looking region that's still my region r. The intercept is still 3 and 0. But now I'm thinking of this. Before, I thought of it as y equals 3x and y equals x squared. These, though, are functions of x. Because I'm going around the y-axis, those won't work anymore. What do I do? You change them. This would mean x equals y over 3. That's the function I'm now using for the line. Here, I would get x equals plus or minus radical y. However, the plus y is the only one that's applicable here. Right? because the negative radical is on this side. So the positive radical y is what I'm going to use for that function. Now I'm going about what? The y-axis, I'm rotating around here. So again, there are two radiuses. There's one from the axis of rotation to the closer curve, that's my little r. The other from the axis of rotation to the farther curve, that's my big r. What is big r here? Radical, radical. radical y, right? My r is a horizontal distance. Right minus left. On the right is the function radical y. On the left is the function x equals 0. So this is radical y minus 0. My little r. Right minus left, because it's a horizontal distance. On the right is the line, which is y over 3. On the left is zero. So this means my volume is equal to pi times the integral of big R squared minus little r squared dy. What are the limits on my integral? It would have to be zero to nine. How do I know it's zero to nine? Right. Because I'm doing dy, my limits must come from the y-axis. So I have to figure out what is the y value over here. Right? Now that's easy. If I know the x value is 3, I just plug into one of these functions to get the y value. Right? I plug in either here, I get 9, or if I plug in here, I also get 9. So I have to solve for that y value to get 9. So the integral is 0 to 9, big R squared minus little r squared. That one's a little nicer. 27 pi over 2 should be your answer. All right, that's like an integral you can do since calc 1. I'm not going to do it. Questions? OK, let's get to the more fun ones. OK, so now problem C. We're not going around the axis this time. We're going about x equals 4. Which means, what do you think when you're doing the this method? Dy. Right. All 
right? So you're going around x equals something, if you're doing the this method, you think dy, right? Which means all my functions should be functions of y, right? Now I know it sounds like I'm beating a dead horse here, but it's very important that you get these simple things down. Because there's going to come a, a time where I'm not going to tell you what method to use, you should be able to choose. And depending on which one you choose, the setup is completely different. It's like opposite. One you use all functions of x, the other you use all functions of y. It's very important that you know when you're doing dy and when you're doing dx based on what method you're using. Okay? So that's why I'm trying to tell you this. Okay, so again, that's the region. This is 3. That is 9. Where am I rotating around? Here. Okay, so there's a line out here. X equals 4. I am now rotating around that line. Remember, the radius is from the axis of rotation to the function. So there's an inner radius from this line here. That's my little r. That's the closer curve. There's an outer radius to the straight line. That's the farther curve. That's my big R. What is big R? Four minus? What? Y over three, right? I'm dy, so my function should all be in terms of y. So I already saw for that. That's y over three, right? Again, R here is what well, horizontal distance. Right minus left, what's the right? Four, what's the left? Y over three. That's my big R. What's my little r? Four is on the right, radical Y is on the left. All right? Again, right minus left. Which means, my volume here is pi times the integral of the, I'm dy, so I'm using the y limit, 0 to 9, of big R squared, 4 minus y over 3 squared minus little r squared, 4 minus radical y squared dy. That would actually give me the volume. The answer ultimately should be... I said x equals 4, 45 pi over 2. How do you integrate this? So you, what? That's 16 minus y squared over 9, right? <laughs> I was trying to wait to grab something to throw. Yeah, you do that, you get zero for your test. Okay, you don't distribute powers across sums. Make sure you know how to expand the binomial, right? This would be 16 minus 8 over 3y plus y squared over 9, right? You just integrate term by term. And same thing, same idea here. Change this to y to the half and then expand the brackets. And it's just power rule. Right, calc one. D. Let's go around x equals minus one. Right? So we're using this method exactly. You see that? Dy. Right? When we're doing the this method. Okay, so we have the same sort of region here. That goes three. That goes nine. Now I'm over here. Right, so I'm going to rotate around something like x equals minus 1. Hmm? No, I'm at minus 1. It's going to rotate around here. Okay? No, so, it's not the negative side. How do, are the radius measured? Radius is always measured from the axis of rotation to the functions. So it's, I can start here and go all the way over here. I hit the closer curve. That's my little r from the axis of rotation. So the farther curve is my big R. What is big R here? Radical Y minus a minus 1, which gives you radical Y plus 1. Right? 
it's a horizontal distance, therefore it's right minus left. On the right is radical y, on the left is minus 1. So it's radical y minus 1. Little r. y over 3 is on the right, minus 1 is on the left, so it's y over 3 minus a minus 1, which is y over 3 plus 1 is my little r. This means my volume is pi integral from 0 to 9 of radical y plus 1 squared minus y over 3 plus 1 squared. Questions? That was D. Now we're going about, oh, the answer to that, I to, to learn on x equals minus 1, should also be 45 pi over 2. So make sure you try these at home and make sure you're getting the same answers. Now we're going about y equals 10. So we're in the this method. If I tell you we're running about y equals 10, what do you think? Dx for different. Okay, so I'm setting up all functions in terms of x now. This is 3, that is 9, and then there's the line y equals 10. I'm rotating around that line. So there are two radiuses. One is coming here, that's my closer curve, that's my little r. There's another one going to the farther curve, that's my big R. What's big R here? 10 minus x squared. Little r is 10 minus 3x because it's a vertical distance. It is top minus bottom. 10 minus x squared. Here, top minus bottom. 10 minus 3x. So we're doing dx, which means our limits come from the x-axis. So that's 0 to 3 of 10 minus x squared squared minus 10 minus 3x squared dx. This should be 288 pi over 5. y equals minus 2. So I say we're rotating about y equals minus 2. We're using the this method. What do you think? Yeah. The x. All my functions should be in terms of x. farther curve, that's my big R. What is big R here? Right, it's a vertical distance. It is top minus bottom. 3x is on top, minus 2 is on bottom. 3x minus minus 2. So that's 3x plus 2. My little r. Top minus bottom because it's a vertical distance. Top is x squared, bottom is minus 2. So this is x squared plus 2. This means volume is pi times the integral of from 0 to 3, because I'm dx, so my, x come, my limits come from the x-axis, of 
big R squared, so I'm going to square this, minus little r squared. The answer here, 252 pi over 5. Your answer for volume should always be positive. So if you get a negative, it means you did something wrong. So it should always be positive. Do we get the idea? There's another method of rotation that we can use to find volumes. called the shell method. I can give you the down and dirty version and then we look at it more. S in the shell method you think of same. Right? So for the shell method if you're going about x equals something you actually keep it dx. Right? Things stay the same. Right? If you're going about y equals something To dy, right? Um, the formula volume is 2 pi times the integral of rh. r in this case is the radius, h is the height. Um, the idea behind this is that we're using cylindrical shells to figure out a volume. So that's where circumference comes into play. The idea is here. Let's say I have an object over here. So I'm going to slice this again like I'm doing Riemann sums into vertical slices. Each of these slices gives me a cylinder, right? So it's called volumes of cylindrical cells. Then I'm going to figure out a radius at each shell, right? I'm going to measure a radius of that shell. And I'm going to rotate each shell all the way around, right? So this shell is going to be rotated So I rotate that cylinder and I get this sort of ring shape here. This is called a shell. But I rotate all the ones on the inside as well. Right? So I have little shells inside of shells. Well, basically, when I add up all these shells, I can get the volume. Basically, what's going to happen here is if I unravel one of these shells, right? like what would be the length around the edge of the shell? It's the circumference, right? So this here would be 2 pi r. Right? What would be the height of the shell? Right, if, what, if this was f of x, it would just be f of x, but I can just call that my h, that's my height, right? That here is h. The thickness of the shell, like this thickness here, I can think of as delta x. Right, so this thickness here is delta x. So basically what I'm doing is I'm summing up all the volumes that looks like 2 pi r h delta x. It turns out to be a Riemann sum, so I end up with the integral of 2 pi R H delta X becomes dx. Right? So that's sort of where the formal comes from. Um, so um, why we will need to know it. By the way, I think I think the show method is actually the next section. No, we're not, we're not done with this. I'm going to do a lot more. Um, by the way, so why would, is this important that we know how to set this up, that shell means the same, and we know the formula and all that? It's very possible for me to, 
Well, I'm going to give you an example like this. I'm not <laughs> Let me not beat around the book. I'm going to say something like, you know what? Um, let's look at the curve y, x equals y squared, and something like y equals um, x minus 2. Right? So this is x equals y squared. y equals x minus 2 is just a straight line. And let's say I wanted to rotate around something like, so this is x equals y squared and y equals x minus 2. And let's say I wanted to rotate around something like y equals minus 9. How would you set this up using the disk method? What are the considerations? I'd set it up as a dx integral, but now I had to, to figure out also my radiuses, right? How are, are the radiuses? Mm -hmm. uh, so from here, I can go to the parabola, that's my big R. From here, I go to the line, that's my little R. So top minus one, so y squared plus nine. It's radical x plus nine. In terms of dx. So is there a problem? Yeah, yeah. at the bottom of the function. What's wrong with the y? You got to say in terms of x. Okay, so. It's radical x plus 9. Yeah, so it's radical. So this would be radical x up here. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? And then I kind of want to close that. Huh? Yeah. What do you say? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Are you including that little piece on the bottom? What? Are you including that little piece on the bottom? No, this is the shaded region. This is here. Okay. <laughs> but that's it? So we're good? Yeah. What are my limits of integration? No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> he's like, a, he's pausing, so I know there's a trick somewhere. You know, one of these days, I'm just going to pause when there's no trick and just. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You see how we divide the section in like little lines? Yeah. It looks like the lines are coming from the same curve. Then they're pointers. Right. Look at where this intersection is, right? Yeah. Think of this side. Over here, how do my radius is? Ooh. Yeah. The closer curve is what? The parabola. The farther curve is what? The parabola. My little arm big R on this side is different from my little arm big R on this side. If I'm doing this with the disk method, I need two integrals. I need to figure out what is that intersection point. I need to integrate from here to here with top minus my big R and little r is the problem. My big R be radical y. Well, it will be 9 plus radical y. And my small r would be 9 minus radical y. Right? Whereas now over here, my big R is going to be 9 plus radical y. My small r is going to be 9 plus the equation of this line, which is y plus y. You see here, my radius has changed. If I'm looking at the same region, though, in terms of shells, so, I mean, go home and think about this, but for this method, this method, you need two integrals. Two integrals with different limits, different functions. A lot of opportunity for mistakes. If I look at the same region, and I'm going around this axis, y equals minus 9, the shell method would work in the following way. I would cut this into shells, right? And measure the radius to the shells. Now, for any given shell, the height is going to be right minus left, right? But guess what for the region? The line is always on the right. The problem is always on the left. There is only one right minus left. There are several top minus bottoms, but there is only one right minus left. For the shell method, I would need only one integral. A lot less work, less opportunity for mistakes. Now, if this, a question like this is given, I'm not going to tell you which method to use. I'm going to say, <laughs> this is the region. Rotate the region bounded by x equals y squared and y equals x minus 2 around y equals minus 9. You're supposed to know, hey, this method is a bad idea here. Let's use the shell. 
Once you decide to use the shell, what does that mean? I'm going around y equals minus 9, which means my integral should be set up in terms of what? One. dy, yep. right? Still, yeah. If I had chosen this, it would be dx. Yep. So if you didn't know that, <laughs> <laughs> right? So this is sort of where I was going. This is why I'm, I was speaking very slowly in the beginning. This is x equals 4. What does this mean? Because a pro you might have to switch, right? You have to choose on the spot what method you're going to use and know how to set it up, right? So you have to both recognize which way will be easier, and once you choose a method, you need to know what variable should I be setting it up in. How do I find the radius? How do I find the height? How do I find what's needed? Next time, we'll look at what's needed for the shell method. I'll do a bunch of examples there. So homework for 7.1 and 2 are due on Thursday, and then we'll go over the shell method. No, no, please.